How y'all doing? Doll back here again, and today I'm going to show you how to keep those ornery little gophers that you keep spinning up, spinning up in your go routines in line. So it can get a little confusing, at, especially if you're starting with go and you're kind of new to it, as, in terms of like how how do I actually use go routines in a way to actually like do do certain things. And I'm going to show you three simple little tricks and they're not like mutually exclusive you can as i'll show you can use all of these together they kind of all build together in order to uh help uh orchestrate them in ways that are useful so i have these <laughs> very uh very basic little diagrams that i kind of threw together on inkscape and i'm going to uh pull them back as i get to them so the very first one that we're going to get to is da, 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 da. It is your basic pipeline. So if you use a Linux operating system, you should be familiar with a workflow like this. Uh, this is basically akin to using like pipes in terminals. So we have a routine. This may be um, a separate Go routine you spun up. This might be the main routine, whatever. It's, it's creating some data. And then <laughs> it's... Um, it's passing this data into a channel to this routine. This routine may is doing whatever to it, um, mutating it, uh, you know, checking it to see if there's stuff that needs to be removed, you know, whatever. It's, it's doing some additional processing, and then ultimately it writes that processed data out to another, to a channel to another routine. This might be again another Go routine, or maybe just back to the main routine, as is the case with the example I'm about to show you. So if we go, <laughs> excuse me, if we go over here, you see we have a couple things here already. <clears throat> um, I have defined a a struct that is mimicking like a item that would be in like a store. It has a price, it has a category. Um, and we have our main entry point here where I have a couple of items being passed into this function called gen, and I'll explain what it does. And then we have um, something here being returned from a function called discount, and then we're just printing out the results of all this. So what is this doing exactly? So in our case, if we refer back to our diagram, um, this first routine is main. It is generating the data. <coughs> now this gen function, and um, you probably, you, you might come across functions like this, uh, these are fairly common if you tend to be using channels a fair bit. What it's doing is it's taking a, a this is called a variadic, is that how you say it? Variadic argument. I mean, it can be any number of arguments. And what you'll get here is these are basically um, kind of like compacted into a slice. Um, and you'll see that it's returning a, a read-only channel. And what it's basically doing is it's making a channel that has a capacity equal to the length of the number of items passed into the function. And then basically what it's doing is, is it's taking all those items and writing them out to a slot, to a channel and then closing it when it's done. So I guess you could say what this function is basically doing is converting a, 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 a list of items into a channel that can be read out by another Go routine. So I am passing into this um, this gen function, these these four items. Um, you see, they have each have a price and they have a category, and it's just it's giving me back a channel that I can pass to another Go routine. <coughs> so in our um, diagram, uh, the gen the gen function is basically giving me this error right here. This is our this is our channel. Um, so if we go back down here, we have a, a discount function. And you see, it takes a the read side of a channel that has that has items okay and it, it's also returning a read side channel with items okay so it's making this channel and then in a go function so it's kind of running in the background um i have the defer attached to the close function here to make sure that when this function is done this um this this channel that you're writing the the process data to it makes sure it's closed so that the receiving end know that knows that there's no more data being sent and in this case okay this is kind of a i figured i i like trying to use like real real life use cases so 
this go this this go routine is going to be it's mimicking say um it's doing some checking to see if we have any any promotions any discounts going on and it seems that hmm we have a discount going on on any item that is that belongs in the shoe category and if it is it's basically cutting the price in half it's a it's a 50 percent off discount um, if you're not wondering what this little this kind of weird syntax is, this is basically the same thing as saying i dot price is equal to i dot price um, divided by two. It's basically a shorthand syntax for that. Um, and then <coughs> after it checks whether it needs to do anything to the item, it writes it out to that channel that we're returning. And then it executes that function and then gives you back the channel so that you can read from it. And then, so if we go back up here, uh, if we look at our little diagram, this routine right here would be the discount function. This is basic. This is what's processing our data and then giving us back a channel that we can read out to see what the result is. Um, so if we go up here, you'll see that I am reading from that channel and with range. So when again. The, the advantage of closing the channels explicitly is range will automatically stop when there's no more data left. And you see, I'm just printing out what the category of the item is and the price. So assuming this works right, you'll see here that there are two items that should not be discounted and two of them that should be discounted because they are indeed shoes. So let us run this, go run pipeline. And you see, first one, price is the same. Second one, indeed, the price has been cut in half. Third one, price has been cut in half. Fourth one, price has been left alone. Okay, cool. So um, this is fine, but let's also introduce another aspect of this to make it more uh, kind of more similar to a real life situation. So let's mimic the fact that maybe this processing takes some time, right? So we're going to do a time dot sleep. Oops, sleep of time dot second divided by two. So it takes a it takes a half second to process each one. Okay. So we're gonna run this. You'll say, hmm, that's kind of slow now, isn't it? This uh this is a for whatever reason we seem to have a little bit of a, a performance issue here. That's that's pretty slow. So what can how can we solve this? Well we can solve this with a second <coughs> besides optimizing your code if in case it runs like shit. Um, we can optimize this with another pattern, which is da, 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 fan in and fan out. So what we're doing here, we're not really going to be changing the original function very much. Um, the only difference is, is you see that um, this first routine appears to be writing data out to two routines. And then they're being combined into this routine and then returned here. So what are we, what exactly are we doing here? Um, so in this case, this would be our main routine. And these two routines right here are actually two instances of our discount function. Um, we are having them both read out from the same channels in order to introduce some, some parallelism to this processing. Because obviously this processing appears to be a little slow. So we're putting a little... Of some, some extra CPU cores behind it to speed it up a little bit. And then, um, but we're now we're getting two separate channels back. Uh, but we, we only really want to work with one. So we have a, a routine here that's reading these two, the data from these two channels, and basically combining them into one channel and then giving that back to our routine. This is um, this part right here where we're splitting these, uh, kind of having these two, uh, just like that right there, these two copies of the same routine read from the same channel. Okay, get down, you dumbass. My fucking cat's being a bitch. Uh, this is called fan out. You are kind of like spreading out the, the, you're having more than one function, more than one go routine read data from the same cha uh, channel in order to add some parallelism, you're kind of like distributing the workload. That's why it's called fan out. And then in terms of fan in, you are collecting from multiple channels the results of the processing 
to again only have one one final exit point, one final uh, channel that you need to read in order to present what has been processed. So if we go back over here, I have a function here that I did not use yet, which is, <coughs> excuse me, um, I just called it fan in. So you'll see that fan in also takes a variadic list, of a number of arguments, and they're all those read side channels. And this one's a little more complicated, so let me see if I can explain this right. So we have a weight group here, and I'll explain why there's a weight group here in a second. <clears throat> so we're creating that output channel that will have the combination of all the data being generated from the, the two discount grid routines. And then we have this, we're kind of like we're storing an anonymous function in a variable because we're going to use this to on for each of the channels being read from the discount go routines we're going to use this to write that data out to our our single channel and the reason why we have a defer on the weight group done is we want to make sure that all of the data from those discount groups has been read before we close our our single combined channel because as you recall as i mentioned in a, my other video about uh, concurrency if you try to send on a closed channel the runtime will panic and it will crash so that's kind of the whole point of the wake group is it's trying to sync up the these these go routines that are going to be running <coughs> excuse me and reading this data from the fan out the the, go, the fan outed data from the other go routines and then uh writing them to a single channel and it's syncing everything up to make sure that the 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 outbound channel is not closed preemptively and then um, as you recall weight group is basically just kind of like a counter so we're adding a we're adding a count to the counter equal to the length of the channels um, so I'm only going to add one additional uh, go routine running discount. So this will be two. And then we range over those channels and we actually call this function, that this anonymous function that we created um, in a go routine so that in the background it's going to be reading the data as it comes out of the discount functions and putting them into the, um, the, the single outbound channel. And then we start with one more go routine to run that's going to wait until all of the inbound data has been read and nothing else is coming. And then finally we close out our outbound channel to tell the final, <coughs> our final main routine that there's no more data coming. And then we just return a channel. Uh, so that was probably a little complicated. Maybe I didn't explain that very well, but I'll show you what I mean. So, here instead of this being out now so we're gonna have c1 equals discount c and c2 equals discount c and out is no longer going to be this out is going to be a fan in c1 c2 i believe yeah so what you should see now is uh they each of these still takes half a second to do but you should see them pop up in in pairs of two um assuming i didn't completely screw that up so we're gonna run this yep so you saw it it um it ran them in pairs of two because now as i if we look at the diagram again these are both the discount functions they these are based these are both reading from the same channel and it's basically grabbing them and doing them in pairs of two rather than doing them one at a time. This would be our our fan in function that's grabbing the 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 outbound channels from these two routines, um, writing them to its own outbound channel, and then finally when these are all done, they they close. Uh, so that's how you can introduce a little more parallelism into your programs. And one last thing. That I didn't really make a separate root, a separate, um, a separate diagram for because it, it kind of ties into this. Is there may be cases where, so ultimately this is the routine that 
is wanting some kind of data, right? But let's say at some point it it doesn't need all of the data. It only needs some of the data. And then f at that point, doing any additional processing here is basically a waste of time and resources. So you want to be able to tell these, these upstream routines that, hey, I don't, I don't need any more data. Just go ahead and whatever you're doing, just stop. Um, and uh, I forget, I don't know if there's like a technical term for this, but I tend to call it like a termination signal. And uh, so basically what it will be is at the very start of this, you're going to, let me do red. I'll do red. Did that even, did that even show up? Who knows? Red stroke. Maybe. So basically you're going to be passing another channel to all of these. All of these routines are going to have, I should probably do yeah, okay. their own, um, another channel that the whole point of the channel is to tell these routines that um, if this is basically the, or uh, I'm doing this the wrong way, aren't I? Well, basically, so you're gonna, you're gonna be passing in one additional channel to all of these other routines that are processing data, which tells it, hey, I don't, I don't need this shit anymore, just, just stop. Um, so let me go over here, and I think the, Easiest way to do this. <coughs> Hold on, I have notes here real fast. Let me look at this. So what I usually see done is so we're gonna make a channel that we're just gonna call it like done, done or finished. And um it's just going to be a channel and you it <coughs> the whole point of it, it is it is it's not really even meant to send anything. So, <coughs> so I usually just have it set to send something like small, like a boolean or something. And this whole thing, I'm going to do a defer close. So what's going to happen here is uh, when this entire routine's done, it's going to send a signal to all of the other routines that I, that it's done. It doesn't need anything else anymore, and that you can just return and stop. So we have to make some modifications to these other uh, these other functions now in order to properly use this. So at the, uh, this function and, uh, yeah, this is function and the other, and the, uh, the discount function, we're going to add additional argument here, uh, of this bool channel called done. And the only real change we really need to make here is, so this, this is looping, this is uh, looping right here, right? So by default, it's just doing this, but now since we have two channels here, as uh, we need to use what's called a uh, select statement. I talked about this in the other uh, the other concur the other go routine uh, video, and select will basically allow you to choose which channel you're interacting with. So I'm actually gonna rip I'm gonna take this because this is actually one of the test cases. I'm gonna do ca case and. Paste. Oops, I didn't go to the right place. My my vim foo is failing me right now. Uh, case. Yes. And normally you would probably actually have something how here, but like this is actually all we want to do here. We just want to see can I actually read from this this channel here? If yes, then just put it in here anyway. Um, and then the second one's gonna be case. Can you do anything from this done channel? If you can, you just return. Uh, you don't have to, again, since we have the defer statement up here, it doesn't matter which of these paths it ends up taking. When this whole thing is done, it'll make sure that it says, it marks itself done in the wait group to keep everything in sync. And I believe I need to also do this for the, yeah, I need to do this for the discount channel as well. Excuse me. And again, because I have this defer statement up here, this makes this change uh, relatively simple. Excuse me. All I need to do is um, we're going to <coughs> uh, do this. Yes. Uh, select. Um, yeah, select. Then we're going to do the whole thing. This looks very similar. Case. Uh, 
out i oops i put the arrows the right wrong way like that's one and then this will look exactly the same case is done i need to actually pass in done i haven't done that part yet <laughs> done 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 uh, done is a channel for booleans yeah so what will happen now is when the the main routine exits because these are receiving kind of like this this done signal all this other stuff will clean up and be done uh and the reason why that actually works that way Oh yeah, I gotta actually pass this in here now. So here, right over here. Okay, yeah, pass in. What the hell? Done. Uh, done. Oops. Done. Okay. And done. Okay. Done. Okay. Let me look at my notes again. One more. One more time. So. What we're going to do up here to kind of demo to, to illustrate this is so before we were ranging over the entire thing. Actually, let me run this first, make sure I didn't break this. OK, so it still works right now. Um, so instead of ranging over this now, we are going to get rid of this. And I am I am just going to only read out like the first two values. I'm going to do print line out oops out and then i'm just going to copy that down and then that's it so if you don't normally do done these other routines would normally kind of hang because they're waiting for these channels to still read uh, but since you're sending all of these upstream routines that are trying to like wait for data you're sending them this upstream signal to say, "Hey, you're. I don't. I don't need you to do anything else. Just stop. It'll just run, and you will get those two. Oh yeah, I didn't do my FM. I didn't do the regular print line, but yeah, you still see. I'm only getting the first two values now, and everything's being cleaned up properly. Uh, so there you go. That is three little patterns you can use to um, orchestrate your Go routines. A simple pipeline a fan in fan out of your channels into multiple routines to do some to emphasize on the try to do some parallelism and a kind of explicit termination signal to give you some more uh distinct control over when your routines exit uh hope this helped y'all out if um if you if it helped you out and you think it would be able to help anybody else out be sure to Share the video, uh, depending on whatever platform this is on, be sure to subscribe or like, follow, you know, all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. And with that, y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.